For some developers, displaying text is as simple as left-clicking, but for my C++ experiment where everything has to be coded from scratch, it all begins with finding a font to draw my text. Fonts are stored in the self-explanatory Windows font folder using a TTF format. TTF files are a type of vector graphics. While bitmap graphics would store information on the character A by using thousands of pixels, a TTF file would store information on the character A by describing the lines that form the character. But in order to display vector graphics in my application, I must convert these lines into pixels, a process called rasterization. Vector graphics can be rasterized at any resolution. A bigger resolution would be used for text with big font sizes, and vice versa. But enough explanation. These TTF files can be rasterized using the free type library, which I added to my project. I then acquired the file path of the font I'm using, and used the new face function to load the font using the file path. Then, for each character in the file, I used the load character function to rasterize the pixels for the character. These pixels can then be copied to a texture, allowing me to display on the screen. Since I'm using Vulkan for rendering, this requires a 5 quintillion step process that is beyond the focus of this video. To display the character, I create a rectangle containing the texture of that character. Displaying a sentence involves creating more rectangles for each character. The result is an eye-quenching abomination. All these characters are stretched out of proportion because different characters have different sizes and may have features like tails or accents that go beyond the boundaries. However, the TTF file has all that information. All characters in the TTF file store data on its size, bearing, and advance, which can also be extracted using free type. The size of the character is used to create a rectangle with the same size as the character, so that the texture is no longer stretched. All characters also have an advance, which determines how far away the next character should be. Thin characters have a smaller advance than wide characters, so the advance can be used to ensure that all characters are properly spaced in the sentence. Finally, all characters have a bearing, which determines how high above the bottom each character should be. For characters like Ji, the bearing is smaller than the actual height, making the character's tail below the bottom line. Now I have everything necessary to make a normal looking sentence. The problem is that longer sentences get cut off eventually. This can be solved with word wrapping. This involves splitting the sentence into an array of individual words. We find the size of each word by adding the length and advance of each character. Then we add each word to the sentence until the current sentence size plus the next word size is bigger than the screen size. When that happens, we put the word on the next line and repeat the process from there. But what if we wanted this to be on the center of the screen? First we calculate the length of this line of the sentence. Then we divide the line length by 2 and divide the screen length by 2. Subtract the halved sentence length from the halved screen length. Then add the resulting number to the position of each character in this line, and repeat the process for each line. That's everything needed to make something aligned. This process has been rather tedious, but everything I've covered so far is just the tip of the iceberg of user interface development, so stay tuned for more updates on the C++ game engine psychological experiment.